When I was in college, I was playing that game, The Sims, The Sims 2, one night, and I was watching my Sim come home to her little furniture-free house, and she would sit down on the floor and she would write in her journal. And that gave me a sudden spark of inspiration, and I had to pause the game and go and get one of my empty notebooks and start start journaling myself. I wrote a few lines on how good it felt to have finally started a journaling practice and how it made me feel safe and like I could see my life more clearly. And then I went on to contemplate whether or not I should go out at night and what I could do to make that guy who was interested in notice me and you know, all of that regular girl in her 20s stuff. When I was growing up, having a journal meant having one of those little cute diaries with a lock and key and you would start each entry with the words dear diary and then you would document your day you know write about your life and what has transpired that day documenting my life in that way just felt like a chore to me and it still does i started a journaling practice for completely different reasons the first one being dyi therapy reading my entries from that time in college is equal parts comedy and tragedy today. Page after page of ruminations and angst and feverish strategizing of how I was going to reach my goals and solve all of my problems. A lot of it was relationship related, you know, lots of why doesn't he answer my texts? That type of problem solving. I could write for hours and hours and when I would finish I would feel so calm and just clear-headed, like I had written sense into myself. A lot of my entries started out in first-person perspective. I feel this way, I wonder if I should do this or that, and then they would sort of gradually shift into second-person perspective. So you, you should do this. Um, you don't have to worry about this because X, Y, and Z. And it was like this wiser part of myself uh, would go in and sort of take over the pen. Journaling this way has gotten me through like the darkest times in my life. The more troublesome, the more I would write. Sometimes it would be all I did all day was just write and write and write and write. Get all of those emotions out onto the page. And still today, my journal is my safe space. It's my therapist's couch and it's my war room. And it's almost like a physical place that I can go to when life feels confusing and overwhelming. I write to ground myself in the here and now, to escape that feeling of life just passing you by. I write to connect to my intuition, um, especially when I need to make difficult decisions. I write to figure out how I feel about things. Sometimes I don't even know what I think and feel about something until I have written about it, until it's there on the page. I write down my goals and my wishes, and just the act of writing them down feels like I'm willing them into existence. I write to strategize about my life and to make step-by-step -step plans for how to achieve my goals. I write when I'm sad, I write when I'm angry or frustrated, I write to celebrate my wins and to express gratitude. And sometimes I write just to spend some quality time with myself, just to feel the sensation of the pen moving across the paper or my fingers moving over the keyboard. There is of course a lot of value in documenting your life, not to mention the entertainment factor of being able to go back and read through all of your past struggles and insights. But for me, a journal is less about that, it's less about looking back, and it's more about grounding myself in the now and looking forward. It's like the steering wheel of my life. When I'm journaling, I feel like I am in control and I know where I'm headed. And I believe that keeping a journal is especially valuable for us creative and emotional folks. <laughs> Just thinking about things or meditating about them is not enough in my experience. They need to come out in some way. They need to be channeled, they need to be expressed. We need a place where we can just let all of our thoughts and feelings and ideas and experiences and stories out, out into the world. I mean, obviously everyone benefits from this type of self-expression, not just creative people. But if creativity is your job, then you might actually need it as a professional 
tool, which is the second use that I've found for my journal. So here are just some of the ways that keeping a journal has been of immense use to me in my creative career. First of all, in, in general, as a creative entrepreneur, I use it for goal setting and for figuring out what I want, so using my intuition, strategizing, making plans, you know, bullet journaling is a great tool for that. I use it for decision making, for writing pros and cons lists. And I also use it to write these, I like to call them self pep talks, where I just try to encourage myself and talk myself off the ledge <laughs> of fear. An example of that could be that I would just start out by writing all of my fears around something. Maybe it's a goal or something that I want to try to do, but I'm scared. So I would write all of the things that I'm afraid of, all of the things that I think are going to go wrong. <laughs> and then I would go through them one by one and I would just be almost like a lawyer, you know? <laughs> I would debunk them. I would debunk all of my, my fear, fearful statements one by one. And I would turn it around to be sort of like a, an encouraging pep talk instead. And I would list all of the reasons why it's gonna go great. So that's a practice that I highly recommend. As a writer, a journal has been probably the most crucial. <laughs> I've used it for like clearing my throat before I start a writing project, just writing freely, free writing, just to get my thoughts moving and my words moving. It's also great for finding your writing voice. If you write every day, even if it's just for yourself, you're gonna find your voice, you're gonna discover different ways to write sentences and punctuate and find all of those little quirks that make it your voice. It's great for idea brainstorming. It's great for first draft, as a first draft place for blog posts or articles or stories. And it's awesome for creative problem solving. I've actually, all of the larger writing projects that I have made, like the short stories and the novellas, I have also kept a writing journal on the side where I've just written about my story and I have usually started out writing in there to do this kind of throat clearing that I was talking about and then whenever I would need an obstacle in my writing or feel stuck or uninspired I would go to my writing journal and I would journal about it and I would sort of problem solve on the page maybe try out different ways that the story could go. And I would do that to just keep my fingers moving. Even if I wasn't progressing in my story writing, I would at least keep my thoughts going. And I would always get unstuck by, by doing that. That's really helpful if you're an author or a writer of any kind. Keep a writing journal and keep a project-specific writing journal too. Because it's really fun to go back <laughs> and read sort of exactly your thought process as you were writing that story and how you got to the conclusions that you did and how you came up with ideas and that sort of thing is really fascinating and fun to, to have. As an artist, a journal has been very important to me. I've used it to figure out where I want to go and what I want to make next. And I've used it for writing down just ideas that I get or visions or maybe dreams very visual dreams that I might turn into an art project in the future. I have also tried something that's called nature journaling. It wasn't really for me because I don't enjoy being outside in the sun really sweaty and trying to like paint a flower. <laughs> so it wasn't really my thing, but I have, I have dabbled in it and I know a lot of other artists enjoy that type of journaling practice where it's sort of like a combination of text and little scribbles and thoughts and um, little illustrations. I've also used journaling as an actor and I've heard some other actors doing that as well. Keeping a journal as your character is really helpful <laughs> to like put yourself into another state of mind and to start to thinking and feeling as your character. A journal is very helpful for that. It's also helpful to write about memories or dreams or thoughts that you might use as your instrument because as an actor you're using your, your mind and your emotions and your memories as your tool, <laughs> as your instrument. And journaling is a great way to 
dig up that stuff. And it's also very good for, for that type of self pep talk that I talked about earlier, because you need that a lot as an actor. You are often in very vulnerable situations, um, doing auditions or working on set, and there are so many, so much nervous energy, and you really, you need a place to ventilate. Okay, so that's sort of like the story of what my journal has meant for me throughout the years and the many ways that I have used it to stay sane and productive and creative. Let's talk about how you can start a journaling practice because I know a lot of people want to do that but they don't really know where to start and how to do it and they're sort of overwhelmed that it feels weird in the beginning so, so let's dive into that. There are, as we've seen, many, many, many different ways to keep a journal and only you can decide what's useful to you because I think it needs to come down to what is actually going to be useful to you. It does take time and dedication to, to keep a journal. So if it's not something that you feel like you're really getting something out of, then you're not going to do it for an extended period of time. So maybe what you first need to do is just to cast aside all of the preconceived notions that you have about what a journaling practice is, and instead just ask yourself what you actually need and want. I have always had this dreamy goal of being the type of person that gets up really early in the morning and, you know, goes to a special little writing nook someplace, and <laughs> I sit with my beautiful hardcover journal and I write in longhand, of course, like cursive script and really flowery prose. And, and I write about my day, like some kind of Jane Austen character or something, I don't know. But in reality, I like to sleep in and my handwriting it looks awful. And I don't really like those overly embellished hardcover journals. They, they freak me out. <laughs> they make me not want to dirty them with my very mundane thoughts. Your journaling practice can be whatever you need it to be. It can be as short and simple or as complex and ambitious as you want. <laughs> so step number one, get clear on why you want to keep a journal and what exactly you want to use it for. Number two, where are you going to write? Some people will insist that a journal should be analog. It should be a physical book and you should write longhand because reasons. <laughs> I don't know. I think there are some studies that show that you get better memory retention when writing longhand, like if you're taking notes or something. I don't really see how that's relevant. I write stuff down so I don't have to remember them, <laughs> but I mean, maybe if you're memorizing lines as an actor or something, then I guess it might be useful. I think the most important point here is that it needs to feel good for you. It needs to feel natural and sustainable. Sometimes I really feel like writing longhand. I want to, to get that tactile experience. And sometimes I don't. I just get impatient and I just want to... I just want to write really fast. Because I write way, way faster on a keyboard than I do with my hand. Writing with a keyboard, writing on my computer, it lets me go quicker and therefore lets me access my subconscious better, I feel. <laughs> I mean, it's individual. Some people might feel the reverse of that, but I feel like the quicker, the quicker I can get my thoughts out, the better access I have to my thoughts, my mind. Digital writing is, it, it's quicker, it's easier, it's more flexible. You can go back and sort of rearrange your your text in different ways, it syncs across multiple devices, you can write on your phone when you're on the run, and there are many good apps that help you keep a digital journal as well. There's the five minute journal, I showed you the physical book that I have, but there's also an app for that. There's Evernote, there's Apple Notes, <laughs> Microsoft OneNote, um, there's Day One. Day One is a great journaling app, it's a dedicated journaling app, so it has more like security functions and more journal specific functions that I that I really enjoy. I have used that in the past. Right now I just use a very simple text editor. It's called I a writer. I a writer. It's a weird name for for an app, but it's an it's a Mac and iOS um, app that just works with pure text documents, dot, dot txt documents. 
um, because they like to keep it simple and minimalistic and I enjoy the, the minimalistic feel and look and feel of that app so that's what I use and I have a lot of different folders for all of my projects all of my writing projects along with my journal as well and I sync that one to both my iCloud and my Dropbox so I have it backed up in, in several places. I've switched back and forth between analog and digital journaling for many years now. I eventually landed in a combination. I actually scanned, like photographed, a lot of my physical journals into day one, just to feel like I had it all in one place. And that's something you can do. You can do a combination. You can probably do that in Evernote as well, and a lot of other apps. And now there are functions on like the, the iPad, for example, where you can write something longhand and it translates it to text digital text, which is also another awesome option. So we're probably going to get more and more of those like hybrid solutions if we can't really make up our minds or if we want a combination of analog and digital. The thing about digital tools and apps to be aware of is that they don't last. They don't really last. I know I used to think that way about my physical journals, like what if there's a flood or a fire? Yes, sure, my journals could get lost, but there are many more ways that a journal is vulnerable as a digital file or digital files. A lot of apps these days have subscriptions <laughs> or they go out of date, you know, they stop being updated and, and suddenly they don't work anymore. You might want to migrate to another app or another system. The files could get hacked or leaked or corrupted or just accidentally deleted, you know, it happens all the time. It sure has happened to me a lot of times. And you know, where will all of your digital journals be in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years time? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows what life will look like? that far into the future. I know my physical journals, as long as there are no floods and no fires, my physical journals will still be in the exact same format as they are today. I don't know that about my digital journals, so they are vulnerable in that way. Also, you don't need electricity to write in a physical notebook. Sometimes there are blackouts, at least here where I live in the countryside, we have frequent blackouts and Sometimes you might want to write during a blackout or during, you know, the end of times, the apocalypse or something. <laughs> there is the dilemma of who is going to read my journals after I die. And that's, that's a legit concern. Me and my partner have made a pact now that if, if I die, he's gonna just burn all of my journals and not even take a peek inside them, just burn them and I'm gonna do the same for him, so it might be a good idea if you have a friend or a partner, someone who can make that kind of a deal with you, if that's something that you are worried about, as I am. <laughs> I mean, just the thought of someone reading those really old journals of mine, like from my college days, I would rise from my grave. So you totally don't need to use a fancy diary, you know, one of those really beautiful, hardcover, elaborate journals, if that paralyzes you. There are so many super beautiful journals out there, and I have tried some of them before. I have tried purchasing those. They're, they're expensive, though. They can be very expensive. It, it just did not work for me, because I felt like they were just way too fancy for my trivial bullshit that I was writing about. <laughs> so. I just ended up not using them, and that's that's not something you want. You absolutely want to be able to write whatever you want, even if it's just word vomit. You you need to have a journal and a, or a notebook or whatever that you that you can just spew anything <laughs> into. Something in between is what works best for me. I just I just have one of these very very basic black moleskin notebooks with you know one of these little. I, I do like these little features. But, you know, it's nothing fancy. It's just regular lined paper and it's black. I guess it's my favorite color. You can you can use a ring binder if you want. You can always change out. You can just keep the paper so you move it to another ring binder. That's another way to do it. Just just experiment. Just get like a just a legal pad or a blank notebook of any kind, especially when you're just starting out. You don't want to overthink those kind of things. You just want to get writing. That's the most important part. And the final step is to just get started. Get started writing in your journal. If you want to document your life, there are many ways of doing that. Little bullet point lists that you can write into your phone or 
long handwritten daily chronicles written by candlelight. The choice is yours. And if you want to use it mainly as a therapeutic tool, just write whenever you need it. Don't feel obligated to write something every day if you don't feel like it. And when you do write, let yourself be just as whiny and spiteful and childish as you want in your journal because it's your journal and no one else is gonna read it but you. Don't hold anything back. Just be, be the absolute worst version of yourself. That's what it's for. You know, I have journal entries from many, many years ago that I can't even read today because I'm so embarrassed. But I didn't write that for re-readability. I didn't write it for my future self or for anyone else to read. I just wrote it because I needed to get it out of me. And it helped me to write it at that time. We don't have to go back and read our old journals. We can burn our old journals if we want to, if they have served their purpose. There's no reason in keeping it if we don't want to. It makes us nervous <laughs> to keep it. Writing this way it might feel very silly and weird and uncomfortable at first if you're not used to having those kind of long conversations with yourself. Journaling is a way to get really, really intimate with yourself, your innermost self. And the more you write, the more comfortable you're going to be with that and the more access you're going to have to that part of yourself, to that part that I like to think of as my higher self my wiser self and you will also feel more safe you will feel more safe and at ease as you're writing even even as you're writing about very difficult things if you want to use your journal mainly as a creativity tool then maybe try morning pages it's a practice invented by julia cameron in the artist's way a very popular self-help book about creativity and it's just i think it's three or four pages of longhand she's one of those people who insist that you write longhand <laughs> but don't worry about that you can totally cheat if you want to but basically you just sit down every morning and you write for a certain period of time or a certain number of pages and, and you just free write you just clear your throat and and write whatever you want you could repeat the same sentence for four pages if that's what you want but it's really just as a way of opening the faucet uh, of the mind and, and the, the creative mind and to just get things flowing, to get words flowing. Or maybe just free write about a problem you're having, a challenge, like a creative challenge of some kind. Use it to brainstorm and to problem solve. You could also check out the bullet journal system, especially if you're using it for organizing and planning your life. Then a bullet journal is, is a very, it's a very great system for that. Everything that I've mentioned should be linked in the description. If it's not, just call me out, <laughs> ask me, ask me in the comments. And finally, and most importantly, just start small, start really small. That's always how we build a habit long term is by starting really really small and then building from there don't go balls to the wall you know and set aside an hour each morning or each night you're probably going to be very excited about it the first few days but then it's going to start to feel like a just a time consuming chore that you dread having to do and that's not how you want to feel you want to instill very positive feelings around your journaling practice it should be something that you really look forward to doing and not something that you dread doing. And then after a while, you're really going to start craving that time with yourself. I usually don't journal every day. I probably journal like a, f a few days a week, maybe on average. I've just learned to recognize the feeling that tells me that it's time that I need to to journal. I guess you, you get to know yourself after a while and you get to know that feeling of needing to get things off your chest, even if you don't know what those things are yet. Usually it's when I'm feeling stressed or overwhelmed or sad or disappointed or frustrated. When I feel like a ship adrift at sea, those are usually the times when I need my journal the most and I always feel better afterwards, always. <laughs> I hope I have inspired you to start a journaling practice. That was kind of my goal with this video. <laughs> or maybe just pick it up again after a long break or try a different way of using your journal. I would love to know in the comments if you keep a journal and what you use it for. If you want more inspiration from me, I have a monthly newsletter that I call my studio letters where I share personal updates and links and resources and tips and sometimes exercises to make your 
creative life easier and less lonely. So you can find the link to that in the description if you want to join. As always, thank you so much for being here and for watching my videos, and I'll see you in another one. Thank you.